Okay, welcome to part three of lecture 13 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question about why it should be the case that having the ratio of the jet velocities be one would maximize propulsive efficiency. And the reason is basically that this is gonna minimize mixing loss, um, right? So when I've got two jets that are at different speeds, there'll be a shear layer that forms between them and there'll be entropy generated as uh, that shear layer causes the two streams to mix and that increases the required propulsive power. So having equal jet velocities reduces the average stagnation pressure, uh, sorry, having different jet velocities reduces the average stagnation pressure due to mixing and that's basically equivalent to a drag increase on the airplane. And so then the last step, once we've set that, is to determine our bypass ratio. And so if we look at the power balance for the low pressure set shaft, we have a contribution from the power from the low pressure turbine, and that's got to equal to the power to the fan route and the booster, and the power to the bypass stream. So then T05 uh, is basically set by the low pressure turbine pressure ratio as well as its isentropic efficiency. So the only unknown here is the bypass ratio BPR. So to actually solve this and put it all together, we have to use an iterative procedure. We have to select our core outlet conditions, so T045 and P045, and those don't change. Then we choose a fan pressure ratio that we want, and that determines the bypass jet velocity. We then choose our ratio of core to bypass jet velocity, and here we're gonna take that ratio to be one. We'll then guess the value for the low pressure turbine pressure ratio, which is P045 over P05. Then we compute P05 and P05 over PA based on the efficiency of the low pressure turbine and its inlet conditions. And then we compute the core jet velocity and compare that to the bypass jet velocity. If the core jet is too fast, um, we increase P045 over P05. If it's too slow, we decrease P045 over P05 and go back to step five. And so we basically repeat steps five and six until the uh, jet and bypass velocities agree to the or in agreement to within the ratio that we've specified. And then we can use the equation on the last slide uh, to compute the bypass ratio. And then we can get the gross thrust and net thrust per unit mass flow through the core. So let's look at what this looks like for our new efficient aircraft engines. So we've got our new efficient aircraft core and our cruise flight conditions. So our overall pressure ratio is 45, turbine inlet temperature is 1500 Kelvin, Mach number 0.78 at 35,000 feet altitude and under the assumption that the core and bypass jet velocities are equal. So the first thing we'll look at is the bare engine. So we haven't thought about the nacelle or anything like that yet. And so on the horizontal axis, we have fan pressure ratio. And then there's two curves shown here, the bypass ratio in black and the dash or in solid and the dashed line is the low pressure turbine pressure ratio. You see that they both vary, um, but the bypass ratio varies much more strongly um, and that they both decrease as the fan pressure ratio rises. So the fan pressure also, pressure ratio also in thrust impacts the thrust per unit core flow. Um, and the gross thrust varies a lot more than the net thrust does because, when, because the bypass ratio is also changing. The net thrust is the quantity that's relevant at cruise where the gross, while the gross thrust approximates our takeoff conditions. So here we see that the gross thrust drops a lot as the fan pressure ratio rises, um, but the net thrust, while decreasing, doesn't change very much. And so the fan pressure ratio, again, is gonna affect this also the specific fuel consumption for a given core, right? The mass flow rate of fuel use is the same for all these possible fan pressure ratios. So the net thrust variation is gonna yield a variation in specific fuel consumption. So the specific thrust, uh, Vj minus V, is also varying strongly with pressure ratio. We see that here in the dashed line is increasing as the pressure ratio goes up. And the specific fuel consumption also goes up uh, as the, the fan pressure ratio rises. So this basically alters our overall engine size requirement for however much overall thrust that we need. Now, the results we looked at so far were for the bare engine, so no consideration of the drag on the nacelle that has to surround the engine. And the terminology here that we're gonna use is when we talk about the engine and the cell together, we call that the power plant. 
We really have to account for this nacelle drag to be able to select an optimum fan pressure ratio. And the mass flow increases as the fan pressure ratio uh, decreases for the same thrust, so the engine's getting bigger and heavier. Um, so to try to account for this, we're going to consider a simplified nacelle and duct drag model. Um, so the drag is we assume that the drag is proportional to the wetted area. So for, for a fixed style of nacelle and flight Mach number, the nacelle drag is proportional to the wet area times rho v squared, um, and that wetted area. The wetted area is uh, going to be pi, oh, you know, proportional to pi d squared over 4, so proportional to the, the frontal area, which is related to the mass flow rate. Um, and the mass flow rate is the net thrust over the specific thrust. Um, so we get that at the end of the day, the nacelle drag is some constant times the flight speed times the net thrust over the specific thrust. And that, that k constant is empirical. We, it's a function of the fan and the nacelle design. And it, we basically deduct that from our net thrust, then we get a net effective thrust. We have to somehow determine this constant if we're going to continue. Uh, here we're going to use an estimate that's reasonable about 0.04. And if we reduce this thrust from the drag, it means the mass flow ratio has to increase in order to produce the actual thrust we need so the engine gets bigger. So as a result of this uh, nacelle drag effect, the effective specific fuel consumption increases, right? So basically, uh, the, the exact amount is going to be pretty sensitive to that empirical value of K that we assume. But what we still see is that the specific fuel consumption is a, a monoton the effective specific fuel consumption is a monotonic function of fan pressure ratio. So we still don't see an optimum. So it's not obvious what fan pressure ratio to pick. If we want to get to that, we're going to have to include the weight of the power plant. And we'll do this next. So the weight of the engine will lead us to having an optimum fan pressure ratio. The lowest engine specific fuel consumption is not the aim of designing a jet engine. The goal is to make the aircraft's fuel consumption as low as possible. So this means we cannot neglect the weight of the engine. Increasing the engine weight means more lift needed and therefore more drag, and therefore higher fuel consumption. To give you an idea of how significant this is, the engine weight for a typical aircraft with two engines could be about 10% of the maximum takeoff weight of the aircraft. The bare engines would maybe be half of that. So this is not a, a trivial part of the overall aircraft weight. As we reduce the fan pressure ratio, we require a larger engine. Uh, we can assume that our fan area is proportional to the mass flow rate, and we can use an approximation for the weight scaling. And a good approximation is that the weight of the engine is going to scale with the, the engine diameter to the power of 2.4. So there's a simple way of accounting for the engine weight. We subtract the drag attributable to the engine weight from the effective net thrust. So let's have a look at doing this. Um, if we look at the, want to look at the full impact of the engine weight increases. So what we just outlined there is, is kind of a very rough way of doing it. It doesn't fully affect the kind of the knock-on effects of increasing engine weight. So before we move on and look at this simplified model in, in practice, think about the, all the ways that you think a heavier engine would impact the aircraft. And try to come up with some answers before you move on to the next part of the video.